Hello, wine drinking people. Today is Sunday, the end of September. Ah, what a great month it was. And uh, for those of you that missed our Schramsberg Dinner Lobster Bar, um, well, it's sold out in uh, I mean, just a, I mean, a day since uh, we put it up on the website. We didn't even get a chance to put an email out on this event, and that is due to the great work that the Davies family has done over the years. The Schramsberg has been around its current incarnation since 1965. The winery was actually built in 1862 when Jacob Schramm uh, built the first mountainside winery in the Napa Valley. And Jack and Jamie Davies had the dream of going up there and creating something unique, something uh, different than what anyone had been done in the wine business up at this point, a sparkling wine at the quality level, the great champagne houses. And uh, Hugh is uh, the next generation he's taken over. I'll never forget the dinner that we did at Mark's Las Olas with Jack and Jamie. It was one of the last dinners I, would, I believe that uh, he did down here. He had Parkinson's at the end and uh, still very passionate about uh, the project that he and his wife had started. And uh, he was drinking out of a straw at that point, but uh, he got up and he gave a wonderful speech about uh, you know Schramsberg, when the uh, iconic wine that he, Jamie, and the rest of the family had created, and uh, I'll never forget that evening. And you know, Hugh and I were reminiscing. Um, I met him on his first trip here in 1996, and I've been a, lucky enough to be a part of several tastings uh, with these great wines. And uh, the unveiling of the J. Schramm label, the 1998 vintage of that, I was at the blind tasting we conducted at East City Grow on the Beach against. Krug, Le Grand Dame, Dom Perignon. There was a half of a dozen or more great marquee champagnes, Tete de Cuvées, and Blind. Um, I think that Jay Schramm came out in third place that evening among our group of over a dozen tasters, industry professionals, sommeliers, wine writers. And then at the Sats High, we did it again, I believe like a year or two later, with the Jay Schramm Rosé, the very first vintage Blind, with 30 people in the room this time. And, uh, phew, uh, even better result, uh, Jay Schramm came out in first place. And most of these other marquee champagne houses, uh, the wines are triple or quadruple, quadruple the price of the Jay Schramm, which at $150 ain't cheap, but hey, it takes five, six years to make this wine a very expensive process, making the world's finest sparkling wines. And Schramsberg makes sparkling wines the same way they do in champagne. They don't put champagne on the bottle. And, um, well, you know, there are some other California people that do. Uh, they don't make nearly the same quality level that Schramsberg does. When you look at an American-owned sparkling wine producer at the high end, there's no one that's given Schramsberg any competition since they started in the 60s. They're the only people that you can turn to. If you don't want a French-owned house, they do have some high-end sparkling wines in California now that are made by French producers that have moved in after seeing the quality that these guys have achieved and, of course, very famous for... Uh, Nixon's visit to China, bringing the Schramsberg Blanc de Blanc with him, and uh, you know later that one was it was revealed on the news what happened. Barbara Walters uh, pronounced it the Blanc de Blanc from Schramsberg, so uh, Blanc de Blanc. Sorry, it's uh, Blanc de Blanc, and it means a, a white wine made from white grapes. Uh, although there is a little Pinot Noir in their Blanc de Blanc. Well, this evening we started out with the Rosé, the Mirabelle, which is more their entry-level kind of, uh, you know, buy-the-glass pour uh, for restaurants, and the Schramsberg Rosé, both of the pink wines. And uh, these guys hosted us outside at Lobster Bar, which is really nice. They've got a beautiful setup. They've done a great job redesigning this restaurant. And the Cushy Oyster with Ghost Pepper sounded delicious, as did the Hamachi Tarts are. I was too busy walking around talking to the crowd. I didn't get those. But the House Smoked Salmon over the Bellini, and the char-grilled octopus with the red onion marmalade. Fantastic with these rosés, the Mirabelle rosé. A little darker in color uh, than the uh, Schrasberg rosé, but both of these wines, lovely balance. And just the right hint of sweet fruit. And then you get this wonderful underlying acidity. One of the things that all of the great world's great sweet wines have. You know, when they develop their property uh, up there on Diamond Mountain, they plant it with Pinot Noir and Chardonnay because those are the grapes they needed for their sparkling wines. But today, they've ripped all those up. They have some vineyards down in Carneros. They have some stuff in the Sonoma Coast. They still buy a lot of their fruit. They're up to about 80,000 cases in production, with their largest production being in the blank to blank. The Blanc de Blanc. And um, that's, we have the 2011 vintage of this next. And this wine, lovely freshness in this wine. I love Blanc de Blanc uh, champagnes. They go wonderful with food. And this main scallop crudo that the chef did over her lobster bar was fabulous. The ponzu cilantro uh, sauce he served with it was great. And the papaya and mango, that sweet and salty combination along with the richness of the scallop was just beautiful with the Blanc de Blanc champagne from 2011. Which 2011, a difficult year for North Northern California, but hey, when you pick the grapes earlier like you do for sparkling wine, I was talking to you and he said, Andrew, I think we made one of the best 
Blanc de Blancs ever with this 2011. I would have to agree. I'd like to see this wine with a few years of bottle age to it. Very, very fresh still. Hey, we've got the 2009 Blanc de Blanc on the shelf here. Uh, so some stuff with a little bit more bottle age here at the Wine Watch in addition to these new releases that we've got on this offering. All right, the Blanc de Noir was up next with the of course, you're at Lobster Bar. You're going to get lobster, the lobster ravioli with the uh, apple curry sauce, that lovely spice in that. Something that goes great with sparkling wines. The Blanc de Noir, of course, uh, white wine made from black grapes. And uh, this is mostly Pinot Noir, but they do use a little Chardonnay in this also. A little richer than the Blanc de Blanc and uh, went very well with that lobster. Lobster, of course, very rich. They threw a little Alaskan king crab on top of that just to kick it off, kick it up a notch. Uh, really good. And then the newest thing from Shroudsburg, the J. Davies Pinot Noirs. You know, these guys tried their hand at Cabernet, and uh, they make a fabulous Cabernet from their estate vineyard. You know, they still sell a lot of that fruit. Uh, one of the guys that used to buy, Dave Ramey, uh, he told me, Andrew, this is some of the best fruit that I get. He used it in his Pettigral, I know, a number of vintages. And that Cabernet is on this offering. We didn't have it that evening. Uh, well, the themed seafood goes a little better with Pinot Noir. This Royal Doral with the wild mushroom, uh, yellow foot mushrooms underneath it with a wild mushroom banyuls broths was just beautiful with the Farrington Vineyard and the Nobles Vineyard Pinot Noir. Both of these small production, uh, high-end Pinot Noirs and uh, just fabulous uh, examples of these varietals. 2012, a great vintage. And uh, both of them had some lovely fruit to them, but very balance, some nice acidity. One of the things we love about the Pinot Noir grape, this lovely velvety texture. The Farrington had a little bit of a peppery spice to it, some mocha, some plum, and then the uh, Nobles Vineyard here to me a little bigger, some cola, some gingerbread and nutmeg there on the finish, but both of these excellent juice and uh, just a few hundred cases production. The Wine Watch, one of the few places that you'll find these wines. And the Cremant, we finished up with dessert. You know I don't eat dessert, but I will drink it. And the Cremant, a very unique wine because it's made from a hybrid grape, a cross between Semillon and Gewürztraminer called Flora, and uh, combines the kind of floral character, fruit forward character of Gewürztraminer with the structure of Semillon. They add a little Pinot Noir and Chardonnay with this, and it's got less effervescence than uh, the other sparkling wines that they make and a little more residual sugar to it. So, uh, hey, man, check out all of these wines from Schramsberg. We got the J. Schramm in the store. We got the Blanc de Blanc, the Rosé, the Blanc de Noir. Usually we have everything that they carry, and uh, I listed everything else that they have that we didn't have this evening, all the current releases on this offering. So check it out. Our good friends from Schramsberg. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.